Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Tiziano Cameroni, and uh, together with uh, Mr. Paolo Giorgetti, uh, we are the owner of Professional Dietetics. Uh, today, we are having here with us uh, Professor Daniele Cardaropoli, uh, that will uh, take a webinar related to wound healing and mucosa regeneration in dentists. Um, before leaving uh, the space to uh, Professor Cardaropoli, I would like to have a couple of minutes uh, to introduce uh, our company so that uh, then we can uh, jump in the main topic uh, we have to talk about today. Okay, so a second. So Professional Dietetics is an Italian company specialized in uh, patented amino acid formulas for medical use. Our expertise is on uh, many areas of the life science, and uh, to the right you can see some of the area we are working on, such as dentistry that we will talk about today, uh, cardiology, pneumology, wound care, rehabilitation, uh, uh, radiochemiotherapy, nephrology, and finally aesthetic medicine. The company focus is on uh, clinical research and patents, and uh, our focus uh, is on two lines of research. The first one is the one related to metabolic and rare diseases, where we work uh, on the mitochondria and uh, specifically we uh, work on energy optimization. From this line of research, we develop the food for special medical purpose. Then we have the line, uh, the second line of research, uh, that is the one related to tissue regeneration. Here, uh, we stimulate the fibroblast and we work on the protein synthesis modulation. Um, here is where uh, we develop the medical devices. History of the company. Uh, the company was founded in 1996 by Mr. Giorgetti and uh, over the more than 20 years of experience uh, we did more than 100 scientific publications more than uh, 50 European international patents, and we developed more than 50 medical device close to entry and numerous food for special medical purpose. Uh, our organization uh, is very lean and very effective, and uh, we have inside the head of each uh, department, while we work outside with uh, consultants and universities. To give you an idea, uh, of uh, how many researchers are working with us, we have to consider that uh, we work with about 100 researchers across the world. Advantages of this kind of uh, organization is that we are very flexible, fast and effective, and uh, we can pick up uh, the best university and researcher, to, researcher for each of the projects. The two line of research are then uh, uh, gen generating three line of product. The first one is the one of the product uh, um, for topical use, where uh, we work predominantly on the, the derma and the mucosa. We are in supportive care, wound care, dentistry, and uh, gynecology. Then we have the injectable for intradermic and intraarticular use. And finally, we have uh, essential amino acids uh, for nutrition. Here, we work on energy metabolism. So mitochondriogenesis, anabolism, and improving immunological ability. Today, we will talk about uh, Aminogam, that is uh, the product that we are launching now. And uh, um, again, I would now leave the space to Professor uh, Cardaropoli in order to start uh, the webinar. Daniela, you can uh, introduce yeah. yourself. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you, uh, Tiziano. It's uh, a big pleasure for me to be here this uh, Can you see my screen? Okay, yep. yes, perfect. So um, this, uh, this morning during this webinar, I will uh, try 
to share with you some uh, knowledge that we have uh, about the use of uh, this uh, product, this medical device that is called Aminoga. I can tell you that I have uh, a long time history with uh, this uh, product going back some years because since the company is uh, Italian, I was able uh, to use uh, this uh, product uh, since the beginning of his introduction into the, the dental field. And um, when we speak about uh, tissue healing, and this is the reason why uh, I'm here today, we know that uh, uh, the wound healing refers to the body's replacement of destroyed tissue with uh, the delivering of a new and regenerated tissue. Uh, so this is the reason why we can see here the rod of uh, Asclepius. Asclepius is uh, uh, the god in the ancient uh, Greece. And uh, we know that uh, wounded patients could be healed in the mythology if they were brought to the temple and the, semper licked, the serpent licked their wounds during the night. This is the mythology of uh, uh, the rod of the Asclepius, the god. And uh, just to understand that when we speak about wound healing, we speak about a topic that is very old, is very ancient. We go back 2,000, 3,000 years. Wound healing is a primary survival mechanism that is uh, taken for granted. Uh, even if wound healing has long been considered as a primary aspect of medical practice, disturbing wound healing is frequently discussed in the literature. And uh, there is not a classification to describe the wound healing process in the oral region. We know that every time in which we create a wound, performing oral surgery, periodontology, implant therapy, then we wait for the healing of this wound. And uh, we know that there are a lot of uh, process that will uh, participate together uh, in a team scenario in order to improve this kind of uh, situation. So uh, what is Aminogam? Aminogam uh, is uh, really an interesting product because uh, is uh, made combining hyaluronic acid and four different amino acids. I know the story about amino acid is like to ask the name of the seven dwarf. You know that the uh, uh, Snow White and the seven dwarfs. So everybody knows that the amino acid, but when we ask about, tell me the names of the amino acid, we don't know. In this situation, we should know that we have four of them, and we have the glycine, lysine, leucine, and proline. It is a, a medical device certified by the Istituto Superiore di Sanità in Italy, and um, uh, we can use it in three different forms. The original one that is a gingival gel, and then the company developed also a spray and also a mouthwash. The combination, this specific combination of uh, hyaluronic acid and amino acids is combined under this nickname HY4AA. This is a biochemical combination for improving clinical performance. This combination, the aminogam, is able to stimulate fibroblast migration and proliferation, enhancing the formation of granulation tissue and collagen deposit. We know that the amino acids are the precursor for the collagen. And so in this way, we are able to improve the collagen formation and proliferation of the fibroblast, improving the healing of the soft tissue. So, so our topic, our goal is the healing of the soft tissues. We know that aminogamy is able to promote and accelerate wound healing through the direct effect 
of proliferation of the current of society. So that, that activity is of a chemiotactic towards a specific cells like fibroblast and keratinocytes. And last but not least, not only this product is able to enhance wound healing, but is also able to reduce the pain, to reduce the inflammation the days after the surgery, because it is able to modulate the inflammatory response of the host through the increased transcription of the interleukin-8 and interleukin-6. So it is really interesting. Uh, the mechanism of action is, uh, as we can see here, so we have an enhancement in uh, fibroblast proliferation, in the biosynthesis of the collagen through the fibroblast proliferation, and uh, it promotes the re-epitalization through proliferation of the keratinized, keratinocytes, promotes antiogenesis, and uh, regulating the production of a nitric oxide, it is able to reduce inflammation. This is really important. So we have a reduction of the inflammation and at the same time, reduction of the pain. And so we can use this product to stimulate the regeneration of the wounded oral mucosa, inducing the healing of the lesion rapidly and uh, I can say reducing the pain. Maybe it's not exactly painless, but reducing the pain. Uh, the main protein that uh, is part of the extracellular matrix is the collagen. And so we are here because we know that amino gamma is able to promote the delivery of the collagen. And uh, the perfect sequence of the four amino acids that are inside of the product are able to enhance the collagen delivery. This specific formulation, HY4AA, has been introduced for this specific goal, for this specific outcome. And the combination of uh, hyaluronic acid that is really important is not cross the link. Because if we have a cross the link hyaluronic acid, it will become no more resorbable, or we can say very slow resorbable. It's like an implant that will not be resorbent. And this is not what we need for oral wound healing. If we have other purpose, other treatments, like a filling, filler, something like that, we can discuss maybe about the cross-linking of the hyaluronic acid, but not in the specific topic about oral wound healing. And so the combination of hyaluronic acid and the four different amino acids, they create a thin that is uh, an ancillary action to boost the regenerative power in order to enhance the delivery of the collagen. So our goal is the collagen. Uh, we have literature for sure that uh, we will be more than happy to, to send you if you need. Uh, I just want to share, you, uh, to share with you a couple of slides on this paper that was published in 2009. And we can see here the difference between the hyaluronic acid alone and the combination of hyaluronic acid and the four amino acids. So they, Amino gum. There is a, a big difference when we use only hyaluronic acid and when we use the combination. And so we can see the inflammation on the, on the left, the decrease of the inflammation and the density of the fibroblast. So both uh, activity of the amino gum are statistically significant better with the combination of HA and the 4AA. And also when we speak about the percentage of wound area filled with the new collagen fibers, we can see that from the statistical point of view, the combination of amino acid and uh, hyaluronic acid is much better. And also about the pain, this is really interesting because today, you know, 
uh, I am a, basically I am a periodontist and uh, uh, you can imagine the number of uh, surgeries that, uh, that I perform during the year. So today we should be really minimally invasive. Patients will remember uh, not the kind of sutures that we use or uh, the product that we use. They will remember if they had or not had pain after the surgery. And so for us today, in uh, a con contemporary approach, it's really important to reduce the pain that our patients uh, will feel. And this product is also able to act in this specific uh, situation. I will go fast on these um, slides. Uh, this is another interesting paper in which uh, a randomized trial in the test group, they use it like a placebo. In the, in, in the control group, like a placebo. In the test group, the amino gum. And uh, we can see here that uh, the healing process was much faster when amino gum was uh, uh, used in extraction sites. And uh, also uh, when uh, amino gum was uh, used uh, for uh, gingival healing here, and also when uh, um, amino, uh, amino gum was used for the healing of uh, wounds following laser surgery, laser surgery. Everything was statistically significant. So uh, I want to share with you now the clinical indication. So our experience with the use of this product. And basically during the surgery, at the end of the surgery, we use the gel. The gel is the original one. Uh, I really love this product. You can see in the video of uh, the quality of the gel. There is a very good adhesion of this product on the surface. And for us, this is really important from the clinical point of view. In which kind of situation we can use amino gum? We can use amino gum for oral surgery. We can use amino gum for mucogingival surgery, for periodontal surgery for sure, but also uh, in implant surgery. And uh, this big, big, big indication in the healing of the post extraction sites. Uh, when um, uh, indication for oral surgery, for example. This is a patient presenting this uh, lesion, uh, non-malignant, for, luckily for the patient, we did a biopsy for sure, and so it is an excisional biopsy performed with the laser, and uh, this is the, the, the lesion, then we discovered it was a, a fibroma, so rich of a fibrous tissue, and this is the wound. It is an open wound uh, with exposure of the underlying tissue. We have a lot of cognitive exposure of there. So it, it, this is not possible. It is a contraindication to suture. Otherwise, it will heal with a scar, and we don't want in that portion of the lip. So it is really important, the aesthetic outcome. In this situation, uh, is a really, uh, beneficial to create a layer of amino gum gel on the wound right after the end of the surgery. And then we will ask the patient to continue at home uh, uh, placing amino gum gel, or maybe they can use also the spray on the wound three times a day for two to three weeks. So in this specific kind of situation is really beneficial. Then we can have other kind of situation, mucogingival surgery for sure. In this situation, we don't have uh, attached the gingiva. In this situation, I, uh, I can have in some cases uh, a dual approach. So first, uh, a deepening of the vestibulum. So I want to move the mucogingival line in uh, the apical portion, and I love to do this kind of surgery with uh, the laser. And uh, this is uh, the wound that we have. So all the mucogingival line was moved in the apical direction. There is an exposed tissue, a lot of connective tissue over there that we have to protect. Uh, we don't uh, use uh, the periodontal uh, uh, 
pack from many, many years. I don't have a single syringe of uh, uh, periodontal pack in the office from many years. So in this kind of situation, I want something that biologically will enhance the healing. And so we can see here the, the layer, the bed of, uh, uh, of aminogam gel that is delivered right at the end of the surgery. So we have two purposes, one wound healing, the other one pain reduction. Periodontal plastic surgery. Look at this patient showing a deep gingival recession. It is a, a class three by Miller. And so we need to graft. So we go to the palate. Uh, we create this uh, design of the flap. I will harvest and uh, graft that is made of epithelium and conative. And we have this exposed wound in the palate. So what do we have over there? We have the periosteum and a small portion of fatty tissue and some conative. How can we avoid that the patient will experience a lot of pain. So we have two problems here, bleeding and pain. Uh, and we have to work on both because at, at the night after the surgery, I want to stay at home, I want to sleep, I don't want to speak at the phone with the patient that is going to the hospital because of an hemorrhage. And so uh, this is the graft, okay? Dense tissue, the graft will be placed on uh, uh, the exposed root. For sure, the epithelium will be removed. So now we have just cognitive tissue graft and the flap will, will be moved and coronally advanced. So double layer technique. And if we go back to the palate, we can use a sponge of collagen, a collagen sponge, just treatment the size of the wound and then we protect with the aminogam gel and I use a stand, a plastic stand that will push the collagen sponge and will protect the wound. And everything will heal perfectly. Look after 10 days, after 10 days, how nice are these tissues? This is because of the angiogenesis. So we have a fast early angiogenesis of that wound and new tissue just after 10 days. Pain close to zero. And look, after six months, no more signs, no scar. This is what we want, it's perfect. The healing is perfect and also is perfect the healing of the recession if we compare baseline and one year after gingival recession coverage. Periodontal regenerative surgery. We know that the periodontal regenerative surgery is the most sophisticated kind of surgery that we can do in periodontology. We want to uh, improve the periodontal uh, support of our teeth in the mouth of our patient. So this is a case of an upper lateral incisor. Uh, we have a deep pocket with a fistula, and we can see the uh, baseline intraoral X-ray. There is a, a deep uh, infrabony defect on the distal side. This is the probing at the baseline. Uh, we perform cause-related therapy and we wait six weeks. Six weeks after cause-related therapy, we are ready for uh, the surgery, periodontal regenerative surgery. So, so now we are the day of the surgery, the tissues now are healthy and thick, so they are ready for the surgery, no more uh, inflammation. I elevated a flap according to the single flap approach, and we can see here, the papilla is uh, performed with uh, these incisions according to the simplified papilla preservation flap and uh, a vertical releasing incision distal to the cuspid. 
the flap is opened and we have a full thickness flap elevation. All the defect is the bride, so we remove only the degranulation tissue, only the inflammatory tissue, and we preserve the anatomical integrity of the papilla. And so with this approach, we change the anatomy. The defect at the beginning was a non-containing defect, a non-self-containing defect, and now we have here a self-containing defect. It was a one wall defect, now it is a three walls defect. You see, this is the supracrystal cognitive tissue that is healthy. Everything is grafted with a biomaterial made of bovine bone origin, blended with 10% of collagen fibers of porcine origin. And we don't need any membrane because now it is a self containing defect, and we close the flap. And now it's time to improve the healing of the soft tissue. So we place aminogam gel, you can see here, the aminogam gel on the top of the wound. And then we ask the patient to continue, for sure, for at least two, three weeks, and they combine chlorexidine as a anti-infection and aminogam mouth rinses to improve the healing. This is after six months, perfect bone feel from the radiological point of view. The pocket was closed and this is the control, the follow-up after three years. Really, really nice. I want to share with you another case. This is interesting because this is a young girl, 18 years old with a pocket of uh, nine millimeters distal to the upper central incisor. It is a case of aggressive periodontitis. Today we can say uh, that uh, we treat this kind of patient starting with cause-related therapy. We can see the defect here. And this is the situation following cause-related therapy. The infection is under control. And we start with the surgery. Minimally invasive approach with uh, a mini blade. We create a papilla preservation flap using the simplified papilla preservation approach. The flap is elevated. And uh, this is at the same time a modified minimally invasive surgical technique with a simplified papilla preservation incision. We go inside the defect, uh, separating the cognitive tissue, the healthy cognitive tissue from the inflammatory tissue. And then we have the degranulation of the defect, the debridement of the defect. Everything is cleaned. And now we are ready for grafting. And we use both enamel matrix derivative and bovine bone mineral, the same I used it before, blended with 10% of collagen. And this is the suture at the end of the surgery. So we are performing something really minimally invasive, uh, conservative approach. And I want to show you what I do every time I do a periodontal surgery in the video. Look, at the end, there is the gel inside a syringe with uh, an atraumatic needle for sure, and the gel is applied on the top of the wound. Just before leaving the patient from the office, okay? And so the patient can go home and he will continue, she will continue, she continued to use uh, aminogam. If it is a, a small portion, the wound, one, two, three, one tooth or two, three teeth, uh, I recommend to use the spray. If you do a big wound, a big surgery, you can use the mouth rinses. And this is after uh, the surgery. Look, after two weeks, it is perfect. Wonderful tissues. After six months, and this is after three years. No more pocket. The papilla is back. Everything was preserved. I don't see 
any sign of a previous surgery over here at higher magnification, five years now. It is perfect, two millimeters of probing depth, and also the convene confirm that we have a new bone now supporting the tissue. And now move to implant surgery. When we speak about implant surgery, we can have this kind of situation, tooth extraction, implant placement. It is a, a immediate implant placement in the molar area. The healing abutment, a collagen matrix all around. This is an exposed wound. And here we can use the amino gum. So in this specific situation, amino gum will improve the healing. And I want to share you the concept of open healing. Open healing is a kind of situation that we use every day when we perform the alveolar ridge preservation. Alveolar ridge preservation was uh, introduced many years ago. We published this randomized controlled clinical trial that I'm really happy to know uh, from um, feedback that is a milestone in the literature of the alveolar ridge preservation. Uh, we were able to find interesting data telling that we can maintain the 93% of the original volume of the ridge performing alveolar ridge preservation. Alveolar ridge preservation is this. So we have an opalesc tooth that are in this situation that will be extracted. We know that if we wait for spontaneous healing, we will lose in average 50% of the volume of the alveolar ridge. And so the day of implant placement will be very difficult to place the implant. And usually in 60% of the cases, we need to add a guided bone regeneration procedure. And so look at the video. So we perform a flapless tooth extraction. If there is a lesion, a periapical lesion is debrided. And then we graft bovine bone mineral together with 10% of collagen. This graft will be transformed in a new bone in four months. We trim a collagen membrane, a non-resorbable collagen membrane, in order to protect, to protect the bone graft. And then we use a suture in order to stabilize the collagen membrane. And now, this is a second attention closure, and so we use the amino gum gel on the top of the membrane. So this is open healing because the membrane is exposed. This is the revolution of the concept. In uh, guided bone regeneration, we know that always we need to keep the membrane closed, submerged. In this situation, we intentionally keep the membrane exposed. And we protect the membrane with the amino gum. And uh, it is really interesting. Uh, again, I can show you the, the same patient for sure, the healing phase, this is after 10 days. This is after 10 days, look, new tissue. So the membrane is like a scaffold and the, the new tissue will run on the top of this scaffold. The buccal and the lingual portion will join right in the middle of the ridge. And just we have to wait. After four months, we are ready. This is the new can be a lot of new bone, and we can place the implant and look the uh, primary stability, 50 Newton of primary stability, very high levels. And after one year, everything is stable. I want to show you another case similar. I go fast. So the membrane is trimmed and it is protected. And then we use amino gum. And after two weeks, we remove the sutures, and before the end of the fourth week, this image on the right, before the end of the fourth week, the soft tissues are completely healed. We can see here, after four months, we have a lot of keratinized tissue. The miracle of the open healing approach is that we increase the amount of keratinized tissue, because we have keratinized tissue moving from the buccal side, joining the keratinized tissue moving, from the lingual side. 
And I want to show you an histological evidence of what we all have also at the soft tissue level. So where the amino gum was used, was applied. Here, we have the lamina propria between the epithelium and the connective tissue. This is the connective tissue. This is the epithelium. Four months before was nothing, was open, open it into the mouth. Search of bacteria, but no, there is no infection and no inflammation. These tissues are healthy and will create what we call the soft tissue barrier around the implants. And then also inside the bone, we have a lot of new bone here. And uh, I want to show you another case. This is really interesting. Look, we cannot place the implant immediate placement because we have a periapical lesion and the sinus floor. External root resorption, this premolar will be extracted. So we try to go flapless always. We debride the socket. We use saline solution. We expose the connective tissue and then we graft bovine bone mineral, we use this uh, specifically designed bone plugger in order to graft. And then we use uh, this uh, three-dimensional collagen matrix. It's a resorbable collagen matrix that will be sutured to the surrounding tissues. And so again, this is open healing because the collagen matrix will be left intentionally exposed. And this is the amino gum gel. Every single surgery in my office ends with the amino gum gel. I want to show you this. The same patient from the occlusal view. So this is the, for us, baseline, the end of the surgery. Look where the sutures are at the end of the surgery. Okay, we apply the amino gum and look after 10 days. The sutures move in the center of the ridge, but they cannot walk and they don't have legs and feet. And so it's a regeneration of new gingival tissue. And it is not oral mucosa, it is keratinized mucosa. The yellow tissue that you see there is the fibrin layer, it's not infection. Don't go there with a plier to touch, to move, to, to check what it is. Just remove the sutures and don't touch anymore. Just ask the patient to apply aminogam gel or spray at home three days, three times a day. Look after two weeks, the new angiogenesis, under the yellow tissue, there is the new pink tissue. And in three weeks, there is this, what I call the newborn gingiva, baby gingiva is here. And after four weeks, everything is keratinized. This is really what we call enhancement of the wound healing. And after six weeks, is everything is uh, perfect. So I want to conclude this uh, presentation, Tiziano telling that uh, this data for specifically about uh, the open healing are published. You can go and uh, download this paper. We published in International Journal Periodontics or Started Dentistry in 2000 and, uh, and uh, 12, just to tell you the long-term relationship that we have uh, with aminogam. And here in yellow, we have uh, in the material and methods, we have written that aminogam is applied on the wound three times a day. This is what we have, the product line that we have today. So we start with the aminogam gel, that basically is what we use in the office at the end of the surgery. I can tell you that at home, I prefer not to ask the patient to use the gel because I don't like 
to think about the finger of the patient that got inside of the mouth, maybe they push, they do something wrong. So I prefer to tell the patient to use the spray or if we work it in a large area, the mouth wash, the mouth rinses. So today uh, we have the minogam gel, the spray, and the mouth wash. And this is a, a, a summarize of uh, what we can use. Uh, so Tiziano, I think that uh, uh, we have seen uh, uh, a lot of clinical indication in the periodontal surgery and, uh, and oral surgery. So I am here open for uh, the questions that uh, can, uh, uh, can arrive from uh, the, the, the participants. Thank you, Thank Daniele. You. Thank you, Daniele. So now uh, to the question, you can all write on uh, Q&A or you can raise hand if you want to uh, do a live question. Okay. okay. Wait. I see. Okay, Edita Cutera, Dr. Edita Cutera from uh, Poland. You, okay. Okay, we have, we have a, a question here can, uh, arriving from Toronto, Canada. I have a lot of friends over there. So. Okay, Edita Cutera, you can switch on your microphone because now you are allowed to talk. Okay, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, hello. Uh, thank you for your uh, absolutely amazing lecture. I have a question. Do you uh, recommend the aminot uh, aminoter before and uh, after surgery treatment? Because you told us the mechanism improved the wound healing is up to uh, nitric oxide, but we we don't have in this formula arginine. Uh, so, uh, what you uh, recommended uh, your pa uh, patient? Okay, thank you for the question, Edita. So, what I recommend, what I do is the exactly in this way. At the end of the surgery, I directly use the amino gum gel on the wound, exactly as I show it during the presentation and in the video. Yes. And uh, uh, I link your question to another question coming from, from Canada. Yes, uh, what we do is to transfer the amino gum gel inside a syringe uh, because of, I can be more precise on specifically where I will use and place and put the amino gum gel. So exactly as I showed during the video, we transfer the amino gum gel into a syringe, a uh, 5cc syringe is fine, and then we change the needle. We don't use the original needle because I want an atraumatic needle, a smooth needle, and uh, uh, um, the ones that usually we have in the dental office for uh, uh, also use with uh, cement in uh, prosthetics, something like that. So the small atraumatic needle. And then what I recommend the patient is to continue using the amino gum at home three times a day for at least two to three weeks. Why I tell you at least two to three weeks? Because usually uh, I recall the patient after two weeks for suture removal or in case of a laser therapy, just to have a, a check of the wound, and then I can control. If the wound is completely healed, I ask the patient to quit, to quit the use of uh, aminogam. If we uh, need a few more days, I ask the patient to continue. In case of periodontal surgery, for example, I remove the sutures after two weeks, but then I ask the patient to continue, both with chlorexidine and amidogam for few more days, because I feel more comfortable to have a protection of the wound also for some days, few days, maybe one week after suture removals. 
Daniela, you can go through the Q&A, I think. Yes, yes, I was there, Tiziano, so I already replied to the yeah. first question. Um, then there is what three-dimensional metric did you use for socket preservation? Uh, you, I don't know if uh, I can use uh, the brand name Tiziano here. Not or a not. problem. Uh, eh? <laughs> it's not it, a problem. It, it is published, so it's, it's not a secret. That is uh, uh, the mucograft seal. is a three-dimensional collagen uh, matrix um, that uh, I, I, I used to... I use for uh, uh, alveolar ridge preservation with the open inning approach. It is published, so it's not a secret. It's the, the mucograft seal from um, Geislich. Then I have another question. How long does the jersey stay on the pool post-op? Okay. Uh, the gel as a good addition to the tissue. So we have a question, how long will it remain on the wound? Uh, for sure, it is important to, uh, to do in this way. Usually, uh, the clinicians will understand me <laughs> because we do it this way. Usually, right after the end, so after the last suture, Patient, they want to rinse. They want to wash the mouth with some water, something like that. So they want to stand up and, and rinse, okay? This is the first day, thing that they ask me. So that's not the good uh, situation to place, the, to apply the gel. It's better to let the patient rinse, wait a little bit, and then right before the patient is ready to go back home, uh, we use the gel on the, the wound. So they, it will remain on the wood uh, more stable, and we ask not to, to go back home and uh, uh, and wash exactly uh, at the end of the surgery. Okay. Okay. Then there is another question from uh, Tatiana Molina. Yeah, Tati. Um, yes, I did it, but. Uh, mm, you know that I want to be every time scientifically um, on the right part. So uh, right now we don't have evidence. I did it, I mix it, but we don't have any evidence. So I, 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 this is my <laughs> answer. Okay, so uh, there is on the chat one question. Uh, can this product be used for... Or, or generalized gingival inflammation, okay. Yes, can be used, but not alone. So if the generalized, if the gingival inflammation and 99.9% .9 of the times is related to plaque accumulation, we should use also uh, uh, mouth rinses able to reduce uh, plaque accumulation. And so in my, in my mind, can we use a combination of uh, um, chlorhexidine, for example, and then the amino gum. But uh, just in the short term, so for sure, if there is a gingival inflammation and the, it's related to dental plaque accumulation, we need to perform uh, oral hygiene and cause-related therapy. But yes, it helps in reducing inflammation. Okay, there is another question. So. Do you recommend the patient to keep use aminogan to prevent periodontal disease? Well, no. <laughs> to prevent periodontal disease, no. Uh, the only way that we have to prevent periodontal disease is to have a tooth surface completely cleaned from dental plaque accumulation. So the only way is uh, to have a tooth surface biofilm free. If you have a tooth surface biofilm free, then we can prevent periodontal disease. And uh, yes, spray at mouthwash are for at home use. Mm, yes, I can tell you also that uh, sometimes I use the spray also in the office. Uh, but basically, we can say that gel, I prefer, this is my, my opinion. 
I prefer not to ask the patient to use the gel at home because uh, you never know what they do if the hands are clean. And um, then in this specific situation with the pandemic of the COVID-19, it's not a good idea to ask the patient, we know, to, to, to go with the, the mouth, the fingers, the, the, the mouth, the hand into the, into the mouth. So cross-contamination, so it's better to continue to ask to use the spray and the mouth washes. Yes, Joe asked if uh, can be used post non-surgical periodontal therapy. Yes, uh, can be used also for non-surgical periodontal therapy because also in that case, we have a wound healing. The healing of the wound following non-periodontal surgery is different, is easier for sure than the healing of the surgical wound, but uh, we can use also for uh, cause-related therapy. Okay. Wow. Many questions coming. <laughs> there is a question um, from uh, uh, my friend from Ukraine. Stay safe. And they asked where they can buy the product. And Tiziano, this is your job, yep. not mine. <laughs> yeah. There will be soon distributed in Ukraine. We have not yet, but uh, we will have soon. <laughs> Then there is, uh, can it be used uh, in other situation that present? We yes, say? like after, yes. Oh, because in that situation, we have uh, like an, an open healing, a small wound open and uh, really uh, painful for the patient and it enhances healing and uh, reducing uh, inflammation, it reduces also the pain. Okay. In UK, I think it is available. Uh, it will be in a few days or in a couple of weeks, uh, and the, the distributor is uh, Dentai Directory, so MedFX. So that yeah. group. Anyway, I will uh, send all the details to uh, the people that are asking for, for it. Okay, about the mucositis uh, radiation induced, I think there is a specifically product. Yeah. Piano, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, there is a, a specific product uh, uh, under the brand mucosamine. Mucosamine. That has, right. Yes. That has a specific indication for that kind of pathologies. Yes. So the, the answer is yes. And uh, mucosamine is a very similar, uh, but the indication and there is evidence is specifically for radiation induced mucositis. And also came inducing mucositis. Yes. Someone that is using the chat instead of uh, okay. Yes, I'm working on both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am multitasking. I work on the Q and A and the chat. Okay. I think we have two patients are rising hand. So uh, again, one second. A lot to talk. So uh, Amy, you can switch on your microphone. And then uh, you can talk, and after, immediately after, there is also Edita Kutera again. Okay, you're live. Emmy? Emmy? Maybe it's better if it's yeah. right. Um, maybe right on the Q and A. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Emmy, I think uh, I'm asking you to write on the Q&A because I see that your microphone maybe is not uh, properly yes. set. Yeah. Okay. So I'm now leaving space to Edita Kutera. Hello. Ah, no. Okay. Hello. So, okay. Yeah. So me again. Uh, because uh, I think do you don't understand my question because my question was about Aminotel, another uh, brand of uh, dietics. Uh, okay. No, no. Because, yes, because yeah. I recommend before uh, surgery, uh, one week or na uh, or two weeks, uh, Aminotel, because uh, Aminotel. Uh, uh, it's uh, more, comp uh, more, more complex 
and uh, in amino cell we have arginine. So uh, this uh, mechanism uh, up uh, nitric oxide is uh, because um, this is arginine. So do you use amino cell in your patient? Um, it's oral supplement. Yeah, I have to I have to answer this question because uh, amino ter, as you know, uh, Edita is uh, under launch uh, in the next weeks, so it's not yet available. Okay. Uh, yeah. So okay. and uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Professor Cardaropoli, I think doesn't know even about the product. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So, okay. No, you are one no of the few lucky. Okay. Yeah, you are one of the few lucky who knows about the product. So. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's my favorite uh, product, so thank you. I know. <laughs> the one with the 6 AA? No, 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 no. It's not yet that one, but it's an oral supplement. Oral, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a, okay. a different, yeah. It's a different approach. Uh, okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I think we... We were able to reply to all the questions. Okay, there are uh, other questions. Uh, Christine Merrell, I see. Would you recommend mucosa or amino to use for patients uh, who have bit their tongue? Uh, so, um, Christine, for this, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, amino gum. So, let's uh, bear in mind that mucosa is mainly for uh, the Mm, Radiochemio-induced mucositis. Uh, again, so no, no, I don't build the, the amino gum to the patient. This is the, the question from Amy, mm -hmm. Amy Maccagno. No, 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 absolutely no. I will prescribe amino gum, and they will go to the drugstore, to the pharmacy. They will buy amino gum is available in the drugstore and pharmacy, and. Uh, And that's it. So I, I prescribe like uh, at the end with the recipe with um, uh, antibiotics, anti-inflammations, uh, and uh, chlorexidine and amino gum. No, I don't charge anything uh, to the patients. Other question? Other question about perimplantitis? Uh, well, not to treat perimplantitis alone for sure. But after the treatment of perimplantitis, uh, and if it is a real perimplantitis, it is a surgical treatment, yes, I use uh, uh, amino gamma to enhance the healing of that kind of wound. But if you put amino gamma inside the pocket alone, it will not work, but nothing will work. So <laughs> the bottle will be enough for 40 weeks, yes like the, yeah. the bottle of the chlorexidine. Yeah, if you use it twice a day, yeah. Yeah, two or three. 10 days, yes. Ten they days. don't have to drink. <laughs> yeah, okay. The last uh, is for me. So uh, if the question means if it can be used on the skin, uh, I have to say that there is a specific product for the skin under the brand Vulnamin. So that is specifically done for any kind of uh, wound uh, from necrotic to uh, surgery to diabetic foot to so the different phases also of the wound healing. So vulnamine is mainly for, uh, let's say, the topical use on the dermis. Any other question? Well, so, good. okay, good. Uh, uh, I don't see any, any more questions. Okay, there was, uh, can you use a Saturn in afters? There is a, a question on, on the chat. Uh, there is a key. Daniele, there is from uh, Joanna. Uh, there is, can you use a Saturn in afters? Um, okay, if you can okay. formulate better the question okay. and if you can do it uh, anyway. In the &A. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you.
uh, if there are not uh, other questions, uh, we can close the webinar. And uh, thank you everybody for joining the webinar. Um, I will send out a link where it is possible to download the video. And uh, then, so thank you and uh, see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.